In this mini lecture, I will be discussing the role of the teacher librarian as it relates to the promotion of reading and literacy. The promotion of reading and literacy is a strong traditional role of the teacher librarian. Many people are drawn to the role of teacher librarian because of their love of books and reading. And when you ask people what they think teacher librarians do, they almost always talk about books, reading and storytelling in their descriptions. For the contemporary teacher librarian, the promotion of reading and literacy is just one of a wide range of roles. However, it is still very important. It has expanded from the traditional focus on hard copy books, book displays and promotions. Now, the promotion of literacy includes multi-literacies and multimodal texts. There are many ways to access reading and literacy development and many different types of texts to engage with. There's also an element of creation as well as consumption, as young readers have greater opportunities to produce and publish their own works. Today, I'm going to discuss the teacher librarian role in relation to reading and literacy by particularly focusing on collection management, the promotion of multi-literacies, managing physical and virtual spaces, and promoting reading for fun and leisure. Management of the collection is essential to ensure that it remains up to date, responsive to the needs of the school community and reflective of all users. It's so important that students who use the library can find books in which they can see themselves and which appeal to their personal needs and interests. Developing a collection to meet the wide ranging needs presented by our school community is challenging and requires planning and strategy, as well as a well-developed policy to guide and justify decisions regarding the collection. This includes purchasing decisions and weeding decisions. The collection development policy should align with the vision and mission of the school and include all formats within the collection, including physical, digital and networked resources. The collection development policy should also include how issues such as challenged materials and censorship are handled. Having a policy that can be referred to by all stakeholders means that it is clear how decisions have been made and why they have been made that way. It also means that all voices are heard and responded to equitably and professionally. Barbara Braxton presents extensive information on collection development on her 500 Hats website, and Asla and Alia provide manuals and templates to guide policy development. Libraries are a natural home for literacy and teacher librarians natural leaders for literacy promotion. The Australian Literacy Educators Association Declaration explains that being literate plays a central role in determining an individual's life choices and life chances. Being literate means having the ability to participate in a range of different contexts in effective and innovative ways. One of the most important ways the teacher librarian can become involved in leading literacy in the school is through being highly involved in the analysis of the school's NAPLAN data associated with reading, listening, responding and comprehending, as well as working with teachers to resource and develop the curriculum and supporting students where they are most needed. Using your own school data as well as data collected through research and reports such as the SoftLink School Library Survey is important to convince others of the role of the teacher librarian and the school library in this area. This graph and the one following are examples of the type of data collected by the SoftLink survey. The first graph shows the comparison of reading literacy results with average school library budgets. As you can see, there is a correlation between the greater budget and the performance on the NAPLAN reading literacy test. This second graph demonstrates a correlation between reading literacy results with the average number of library staff. Of course, we need to remember that correlation does not imply causation. This means that we cannot say that one variable, such as performance on the NAPLAN test, has been caused by the other, such as the staffing of the school library or the school library budget. 
It is very possible that the higher school library budgets and greater staffing numbers are also at schools in higher socioeconomic areas. We know that students in these areas generally perform better in NAPLAN overall. However, the graphs do show that a relationship exists between the presence of library staff and a well-resourced school library and student achievement. Having established that the traditional notion of literacy is based upon reading and writing, we also need to address the fact that literacy can have a much wider meaning. Beyond traditional literacy, there are multiple literacies, that is, ways of reading the world in specific contexts, technological, health, information, media, visual, scientific literacy, and so on. It could be said that being literate basically means being able to participate within a particular context. Therefore, it's easy to see how the school library now offers opportunities for the school community to engage with and to develop skills in multi-literacies by offering information and resources in a wide range of formats and by providing a space and the opportunity to create and produce many different physical and digital items. This is the connection that is made between maker spaces and libraries as well as the presence of recording studios, digital production equipment, performance spaces, and more. This leads us to the third aspect of reading and literacy promotion as it relates to the role of the teacher librarian, the provision and management of physical and virtual spaces and access to multimodal texts. The school library used to be the place where learners went to access information. The books stored on the shelves were where the information was and they could be borrowed so that the information could be consumed in the process of learning. With the advent of the internet and even more so the development of mobile technologies, we now have access to more information than even the most well-resourced library ever stocked and we carry it in our pocket. So the library has changed. You've probably heard the quote attributed to Joyce Valenza that the school library must transform from the grocery store where one goes to get the things to the kitchen where one goes to make the things. The library as a kitchen is a good metaphor. There's still capacity for storage. All of the ingredients needed for learning, including books, multimodal resources and access to the internet can be found in the library. However, as a learning space, the school library needs to also offer a place for creation and creativity beyond the desk and the sofa. This is where maker spaces, production studios, green screens, library gardens and more come into play. In promoting multi-literacies, the teacher librarian is aware of the need for the library to be a flexible and welcoming space for learning of all kinds. I've written about learning spaces and the various models that can inform their design on my blog and my favourite model, Thornburg's Four Spaces, is as useful for library design as it is for classrooms. He suggests that learning happens around the campfire, at the watering hole, in the cave, and in life. Promoting reading and literacy in the school involves being aware of the spaces in which these different types of learning might happen best. You'll learn much more about learning space design if you complete the subject LCN 601 designing spaces for learning. Of course, as well as the physical space, the teacher librarian is also thinking about the virtual space and the provision of virtual resources, including eBooks and audiobooks. Meeting the school community where they are means going beyond the physical walls of the library and expanding the library presence into online spaces. This means investigating the possibility of having the school library catalogue available online 24-7, the provision of virtual resources, and also potentially having a social media presence on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, or Facebook. Providing ways for the school community to maintain their connection with the library, even when they aren't physically at school, is more important than ever in building an authentic reading and literacy culture. Finally, we can't forget promoting reading for fun and leisure. Too often we can be distracted by the needs of resourcing the curriculum and in primary schools, providing resources for the teaching of reading. Students will only develop a love of reading if they can access texts that they will love to read. 
This means that there needs to be a well-developed collection of books in different formats, physical books, ebooks, audiobooks, or information on how students can access these things if the school can't offer them, perhaps through their public library. Book displays, author talks, physical or digital book clubs, book snaps, reading promotions, this is the really fun part of the role. There are so many ideas shared online about how to engage young readers. Let your imagination run wild. There are also issues that the teacher librarian needs to be aware of in the area of reading and literacy promotion. With increasing digital resources, there are some who suggest that libraries should become bookless, providing everything digitally. While this may certainly save some space, the role of the library is to offer resources in a range of formats to meet all users' needs. Previous experiments with bookless libraries often end up re reverting to a combination of resources once more, which ends up being far more costly in the long run. There are also decisions to be made about the ratio of physical to digital resources, the management of reading programs and the levelling of books, finding a balance between honouring equity, diversity, inclusivity and the community or school's religious or moral beliefs, and of course, whether or not to organise the collection using the traditional Dewey Decimal System or current, the currently popular process of genrefication which is more similar to bookstores. All of these require consultation with this local community, careful planning and balanced decision making. And we will touch on these issues in more depth during the tutorials. If you want to learn more about this area in particular, I would encourage you to consider taking LCN 617, Children's Literature, Criticism and Practice, or LCN 639, Youth, Popular Culture and Text. This is a really fascinating area of the teacher librarian role and one that we can spend a lot of time talking about.